Um, so can everyone yeah. So yeah, my name is Sam Q. Um, yeah, I'm from Cork. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Smart Data Set, uh, which is a new data set that we've collected for German language use. And this is uh, joint work from myself and colleagues at the University of Zurich. So, um, as you probably are aware, automatic text summarization is quite a vital task in natural language processing. The aim is to reduce lengthy texts uh, or lengthy documents into shorter, more precise summaries that convey the most important information from the original document. And typically, abstractive summarization, in which entirely new text is generated based on the original, is desirable. However, Abstractive methods obviously require a lot more uh, high quality data to train. And this is still a limiting factor when training German language systems. In addition, new summaries might actually be considered uh, easier to collect than other types of uh, summaries that we may be legal or medical. Um, so, new summarization itself is quite a popular um, subclass of summarization. Um, new summarization is also well studied in English, thanks to the existence of appropriate data sets. For instance, uh, this plot shows the state-of-the-art results on the CNN Daily Mail data set, which serves as the primary benchmark for evaluating summarization models. And what we can see on this plot is that, obviously, um, considerable gains have been made over time. Um, especially in recent years, such useful benchmark. Uh, however, of course, suitable uh, resources for German are still lacking. So to fill this gap, we present the uh, Transmission Corpus, which provides a unique resource for training and evaluating German use summarization systems, as well as a few other NLP-related parts. Um, so I'm sure you're all familiar with Ponzi Minuten, and if you're not, then you probably haven't spent enough time on transport. Ponzi <laughs> um, Minuten is a free newspaper, printed daily, and distributed throughout Switzerland, and primarily at train stations and bus stops, and um, but also in its digital format online. So I'd say it's a staple of Swiss daily life, where 20 minutes the average time spent commuting to work or school. And it also tops uh, the list of Switzerland's most read newspapers. So if we take a look at Sonsky Middleton online, um, here we can see a typical news article uh, posted on their website. And if we break it down into its components, we obviously have an article headline, a leading article summary, which are quite common in digital newspapers, and these are intended to uh, quickly communicate the gist of the article and also to attract the reader's attention. These are usually short, sort of snappy, um, executive style summaries. And this is kind of uh, similar to the summaries available in the popular XSUM dataset for English. Uh, we also have a multimedia content reel, which typically contains captioned images or videos associated with the article's content. Uh, we also have a drop-down bullet point summary section titled Dublin Gates, uh, which provides the most important information for the article in a very precise manner. And this is sort of similar to the English CNN Daily Mail, uh, CNN Daily Mail dataset that I referred to earlier. And then finally, of course, we have the article itself, which is cut off in its visualization. And then, in addition to all of this, um, articles are often accompanied by um, quite a decent amount of metadata, I would say, which is embedded into the web page's HTML code. This includes things like keyword topics for categorizing and indexing articles, uh, the author's name, date of publication, and updates and in some cases also estimated reading. 
And in this paper, we identified six main tasks based on these features and set out to establish baseline performance for these tasks. So we consider generating the headlines based on the article content, the lead summaries, uh, bullet point style summaries. Uh, we also experimented with generating the captions for the multimedia content reel, um, considering them as a sort of special type of summary um, based solely on the article text. And as well as this, uh, we also tried open world classification based on the labeled topics and reading time. So in total, the corpus, uh, the corpus consists of just over 51,000 articles, most of which were published uh, since 2018. But unfortunately, not all of the uh, online articles have all of the types of summaries that we were interested in. So this resulted in uh, the number of instances for each individual task uh, differing somewhat. Uh, as you might expect, or, or maybe not, Almost all articles are associated with the headline, which offer the most extreme type of summarization due to uh, a high degree of abstraction, which is indicated by the percentage of novel tokens in the middle column, and the fact that they are relatively short, with an average of around eight tokens per headline, um, giving quite a low expression. The lead summaries are also available for almost the entirety of the corpus and typically provide a summary that's not one tenth of the articles. And then bullet point style summaries are available for just over half of the corpus. Um, these summaries contain the least amount of abstraction, with only about a third of uh, bullet point style summaries using novel tokens. But this is still quite a considerable amount of novelty and sort of motivates us to not try sort of extractive baseline approaches, which often perform well on automatic metrics, um, since these may not, uh, may not prove responsible. Then around 91% of the articles have captioned multimedia, um, which as I said, we consider this as sort of a special type of summary. Um, and these have the lowest compression rate. So in general, we have a lot of images with a lot of captions or maybe shorter articles. And then uh, we also have the keyword topics, which are provided for about 27% of uh, all the articles in the corpus. And finally, predicted reading time for around 20 So the articles in Thompson Middleton cover a wide range of topics. Um, among the most frequently mentioned topics are things like uh, major global issues such as the coronavirus pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Um, then we have local and foreign politics and sports and entertainment. And yeah, this list goes on. There's a couple of thousand different topics in this open world classification scheme, um, but many sort of less frequently occurring. So, having collected the Swansea Middleton dataset, we then wanted to establish baseline performance on the different tasks that are offered. So, for this, we opted for a unified text to text framework, which was proposed by Raffle and colleagues from Google back in 2019 with their pre trained compiled model. And the main idea of this uh, approach is to frame all NLP tasks in the same simple text to text format which allows for a single encoded decoder model, perform sequence generation, classification, regression analysis, all in one. And of course, for German, we use the multilingual MP5 model, which extends the original P5 model to 101 languages. So given this unified framework, we have the option to train a dedicated model for each task, or a general multi-class model, which is exactly what we set out to prepare in a So in the single task setting, we derive six distinct models uh, through fine tuning on each task individually. And in the multi task setting, we train a single model by concatenating 
the training set and reshuffle. And in this setting, the model sees mixed task batches. So in order to provide the model with a signal for the desired output type, we also need to pretend a task-specific prefix. Then for evaluation on summarization tasks, we use root scores uh, and we treat topic and reading time prediction tasks as multi-label and multi-task classification tasks, reporting the percentage of exact length. However, uh, an important issue that is growing ever more present in the field of NLP is that of data leakage. Um, obviously, modern day general purpose pre trained models, such as NC5, are trained on huge amounts of data collected from uh, the web in internet snapshots, such as common source. So, while this enables effective pre training of large uh, language models on a diverse array of decks, it also presents and for inflated results on the basis of testing on the data that the model has potentially already seen during training. And as a publicly available uh, digital newspaper, we suspected that articles from Sons and Milton may have actually been included in the MC4 data set used to train the MC5 model. So to investigate this research through the German section of the MC4, looking for overlap between both the uh, test and development splits that we were using, and matching uh, articles based on the unique URL. And this actually returned a number of matches for each of the tasks. Um, so, for instance, headlines and lead summarization, we found 600 instances uh, overlapping in our test set, um, which we then decided to filter out from the test set that we uh, report our results on. Um, so the official training test and validation splits that we provide with the corpus, we still include these instances because obviously the um, degree of data leakage will differ depending on the model used and the pre data. Okay. So um, coming to the results. Uh, here we have a plot. So we have the Rouge scores on the y-axis and the different summarization tasks along on the x-axis, comparing the single task uh, fine-tuning approach with the multi-task approach. And um, in all cases, uh, what we saw was that the single task models have a slight advantage over the multi-task. Uh, or a more general purpose model. Um, as one other trend that we noticed or observed was that as the summarized text gets longer, the Roo scores typically increase in both like single and multi task models, um, indicating that the shorter, more constrained summaries are much harder for the model to generate outputs that more closely resemble ground truth. Um, on this plot, we obviously only uh, show Rouge 1, but the same trend is observable um, on other variants of Rouge, which are reported here. Uh, meanwhile, on the classification style tasks, which were evaluated with the percentage of exact matches, we can see a clear advantage for the single task models, which outperform the more general purpose multi task model again, this time by quite large margins of more than 10. So just um, as a bit of a, an example of how well the, the model uh, performs on the generation tasks, um, there's a simple or a randomly selected example. This is of the headline uh, generation task uh, from an article talking about uh, COVID-19 health tests being available at our supermarket. And so yeah, obviously I'm not going to show you the full article, but we have the sort of the gold the gold label on the left and the single task and multi task model out uh, in the middle and on the right. Um, so what we kind of see is if we if we consider this as a, as a representative example, it might not be, but um, 
the, the original sort of translated might read Audi opens the price war over Corona self tests. Um, the single task model generates something like Audi sells five Corona self tests in a store, which, given the content in the article, is um, sort of true, but uh, the way it reads is not exactly uh, factual. And then the multitask model also produces something that is uh, sort of legitimate, but maybe doesn't capture the essence of or the style used in the country. And then again, taking a look at like the sort of slightly longer lead summaries, um, what we see is that the models generally perform well, generating sort of acceptable text, but definitely not uh, conveying the sort of stylistic uh, nuances uh, that Quantic Middleton uh, actually uh, carries. So to wrap up, um, we've presented the Quantum Middleton dataset. This provides a unique resource for German news summarization, offering statistically different types of professionally written summaries for the same article. And this opens the door for German news summarization benchmarking, as well as potential, um, potentially interesting tasks involving uh, multimodal modeling with the caption content reels, um, open world classification tasks, and of course reading time. Um, in the paper, we established baseline performance on a variety of tasks using MP5 and found uh, training dedicated single task models generally uh, perform better than multi task models. And in doing so, we also found evidence of data leakage between the MC4 data set used in pre training, uh, which resulted in the need for intervention evaluation setup. So the data set is available for research purposes and is both valuable. Uh, useful for other people and that's people skills on basic. Thanks for listening to my talk and if you have any questions.